the heroes that I've met in my life have been what many would call the insignificant members of the church, the ones that would stay behind after the lights were turned down dim, after all of the great choirs stopped singing and had gone home for that night, and the great preacher had stopped preaching and had left the building. The great heroes of my life have been sometimes the little mother in the corner or the brother that was just deacon whatever, but yet he remained behind and she remained behind to pray. And we find that they are the ones that kept the church alive with their prayers. It was the answer of their prayers that brought revival to the churches and sustained the body of Christ. And so that's why today we're going to pray. We're going to step in that place of a prayer warrior and we're going to pray for the needs of people before we get into the message today. I want to say for those of you that just tuned in, this is Victorious Life Christian Center, and we love God here, but we also believe in the power of God and the anointing of the Holy Spirit that breaks all of the bondages and all of the yokes on your life. You might be going through something today. There might be an issue in your life. You might need employment. You might need healing. You may be having uh, problems, you know, socially. You may be having problems, you know, uh, just coping with the things that are going on in this world. I want to let you know today that Jesus Christ is able to take care of your situation. Jesus Christ is able to move in your life in a real way. We're not talking about being religious. We're talking about the power of God, the relation of God, the anointing of God that steps in the lives of individuals and into the lives of people. And so we're going to pray right now. And if some of you are out there and you, you're seeing us through our web site and you see our telephone number, you know, go ahead and give us a call and we will pray. We're just going to take a few minutes, so you'll have to get right on it and let us know that, hey, you know, we need prayer. Amen. So right now, uh, what are the requ prayer requests in this building? Just raise your hand and, and speak out loud and we're going to pray about those things. What do you want to see God do? Now, I know everybody do it at once. Amen. Well, I know I have. Yes, Kathleen. More healing in your body. Amen. Let's pray for Kathleen's body. Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, thank you for the privilege of praying for one of your saints. Thank you for Kathleen and her faithfulness to you. Father, I pray right now that the anointing of the Holy Spirit would touch your body. Father, we know that you are a healer. And right now, Father, I call healing on her body in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, be healed. Amen. Praise God. Anyone else? Yes. Family covering. Praise God. Father, right now, Father, I thank you for... Uh, Sister Regina and her passion and her love for her family. I pray for covering of her family. Father, I pray for every soul in that family and especially the new souls that have been born into that family. I pray for them in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for the unity of truth and the spirit in that household. Let God be glorified in Regina's household in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Anyone else needs prayer? Sister Tony. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. Father. We thank you that we've had the opportunity to reach out and, and have food to uh, provide for those that don't have food. Lord, we thank you because this was a faith venture. Lord, when we began, we didn't know where the food was coming from. But every month, Lord, you have provided. 
good food, fresh food, just wonderful food for people and families. Father, I thank you for us reaching up to 400 people, being able to put food on the table of those that need it. And Father, it is such a privilege serving in that way. And Father, I pray, Lord God, as we provide to people the, the very bread and the sustenance of life, that they would reach out for that bread that is beyond this earthly bread, but the bread of heaven. I pray, Father, that you would put a hunger in them for the things of God, that you'd put a hunger in them and awaken them, Lord God, awaken their souls to the dangers of, of, of life and also the danger of being lost and going to a devil's hell. Father, I pray, Lord God, that the gospel, the gospel would convict their hearts and create that hunger for truth. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Anybody else? Praise God. Anyone else? Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to pray. Father, I pray for revival. I pray for revival in our church. I pray for revival, Lord, in the heart of this city. Father, I pray, Lord God, that you would give us that influence of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, that the hearts of people would be touched. Lord, that their minds would come to a place where that they would know you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, it's good to be in God's house today. Oh, go ahead, sister. Praise God. Yes. 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 Left. Yes. Okay. That's good. We're going to pray. Father, Lord, we live in anxious times. Things are happening all around us. Father, the world is in turmoil. It's reeling and rocking. And sometimes, Lord God, we can sense that in the air and it even makes us anxious concerning the things concerning us. But Father, I pray today that you would bring peace to our dear sister, peace to her mind and spirit and let her know that you have recovered. Father, that you are gracious in the name of Jesus. I pray, Holy Spirit, just right now, gird and strengthen her and lift her up. Father, I thank you. Father, that you have given us, Father God, the spirit of peace. You have given us a spirit of love and a sound mind. Father, I thank you. That's, that's what she has. Father God, she has a sound mind. And Father God, and she will not walk in anxiousness. Father, but she will walk in peace in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for it, Lord. Amen. Praise God. All right. Man, I love Jesus, and it's so good to see all y'all today. Um, man, it's, you know, yeah, I, I, I love, I, I know God loves us, but, I, you, know, I, you know, when you love God, you get a chance to really kind of experience how he feels about his people. And that's one of the funnest things about being a pastor is that you, you discover that God loves these people so much. You know, and uh, and so it's 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 just fun to be in that it's to be in that loop. Praise God, the, that circle of love. You know, that's what the community of Christ is about. It's about that circle of love that we all get a chance to to engage in. And so I, that's one thing that I'm thankful for today. Well, I'm gonna just briefly just minister to you out of the scriptures. And um, I believe it's Luke, the sixth chapter, praise God. Uh, Luke, the sixth chapter, and our key verse is going to be Luke uh, 6.33, but I'm going to read the scriptures uh, down to that because 
I believe that the Lord is speaking to us in a very specific way today because uh, one thing that uh, Sister Nicole brought out, which I was like, oh, amazing, that's what we're going to be talking about today, and that is anxiousness that we are all dealing with. Now, someone that tells you that they're not touched, had never been touched by this, you know, um, they're just not being truthful. There's just no way that you can be on, on this rocking, reeling boat of life and not get a little um, dizzy from time to time. You know, I always think about uh, when Jesus was asleep on the boat and the disciples were going through the storm. And, um, you know, I don't know what they were thinking because they, you know, they, they woke Jesus up and said, don't you care we're going to perish? You know, but the thing, the reason why Jesus was able to rest even in the middle of the storm is because he knew his father and he knew he is in the hands of God. And, and that's one lesson that the Lord wants to teach us is how to relax in the middle of a storm. How to relax in the middle of a storm. Yeah, the boat's going way up and the boat's falling way down. Waters, you're taking on water. It looks like you're going to sink. Uh, uh, the, the, the lightning strikes are furious. Uh, but what was Jesus doing through all of this? In this tenacious time, he was still at rest. He was still at rest. And so God is trying to teach us. You know, Jesus stood up and he said, peace be still. And they said, well, what manner of man is this that even commands the winds of the wave to stop? And the Bible says, and there was a great calm. You know, I want to say this before we get started. Is God wants to bring a great calm to your life. He wants to bring a great calm to your life. Now, on top of this, I want to say this, is that just because you are a Christian, does not mean that you're not going to go through storms. See, a lot of people, they think, well, the Lord saved me, so he saved me uh, from the storms of life. And so if I really live by faith and really get close to God, there'll be no more star storms. And that's just not simply true. God made believers for the storm. You were, you were made for the storm. You're, in, you're at home in the storm. Praise God. You're at peace in the storm. You see, a lot of times we think, well, because I'm a Christian, everything in my life is going to go perfect. You know, I, I'm going to have a perfect, you know, relationship with my wife. I'm going to have a perfect relationship with my husband. I'm going to have perfect relationship with my children. You know, I'm not going to have any issues on my job because I'm just living God and I'm praising him every day. And so all these things are going to be on the sideline and held back. But I want to let you know that the sign of a real believer is their heart still lives in heaven as they go through hell. Did you hear what I said? Their heart still lives in heaven as their life goes through hell. Praise God. And like I always like to say, when you're going, when you're going through hell, what are you supposed to do? Don't stop. Praise God. Some of us, we stop to have a pity party. You know, you need to just pass on through it and keep going in Jesus' name. Praise God. So, so in uh, Matthew 6, 25, it says, Therefore I say unto you, do not worry about your life. Wow. Do not worry about your life. <laughs> oh, Jesus knows how to hit the nail on the head. What you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing, Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of, what does it say? All right. Praise God. You are more valued than they are. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, uh, it says, the Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Which 
of you by worrying, now get this, I love, I've always loved this scripture, which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? Praise God. That's why I stopped worrying a long time ago when I, I discovered I wasn't going to get any taller than 5'7". <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. And then when I walked in the, uh, into the doctor's office one day and I took off my cowboy boots, the very ones that I'm wearing, because I stood on the scale with these high heel cowboy boots and it made me a little bit taller than 5'7". The doctor looked down and said, take the boots off. And I went down to five, six. And he said, oh, you shrunk a little. <laughs> Amen. No, but, but that was okay, because I stopped worrying about it. Amen. I stopped where I said, well, you know, Lord, praise the Lord. I, I'm not going to be John Wayne size, I guess. But uh, then I found out that John Wayne wasn't six foot either. He had, wore tall, high heels. So, <laughs> okay, we'll, go, we'll, keep, we'll keep moving. Uh, it says, so why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not, wor do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things but now this is the big huge thing that we come to but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things sufficient for the day is the, its own trouble. And I like the way that the New King James puts that sufficient today uh, is its own trouble. So, you know, there's enough trouble. I want to hear what it's saying there. So there's enough trouble today. Why are you compounding it, adding tomorrow and next week and next months and trouble and until it gets so heavy, you're crushed on, not on only on what's happening, but on what you think is going to happen, as if you know the outcome of what's going to happen. And so in that sense, you got to stop playing God. you got to stop predicting, you know, your fate as something other than the will of God. This is so important. And so I just want to begin there. First of all, we get so caught up in the world. You know, now Solomon was the best dressed man uh, in the world. No one dressed better than Solomon. He, you know, uh, he is still richer, you know, uh, than anybody uh, has ever achieved today. Uh, Solomon had, had more money than Bill Gates, more money than Elon Musk. Uh, he was a multi-trillionaire. We're still trying, in this generation, we're still trying to see who is going to be the first trillionaire. But Solomon, if you added up his wealth, he was already a trillionaire, you know, according to today's standard, even without inflation. He was a trillionaire. He was worth a lot of money. There's been several trillionaires throughout uh, history. One trillionaire, uh, I forget what African nation he came from, but he was richer than the Egyptians. He was richer than all of the Europe Europeans. He was so rich that just for him to come to your town, his entourage would make your city rich. Everybody wanted him to visit. Everybody wanted him to come and hang out for a little while because his economy followed him. He was so wealthy. Now, 
a lot of times we get caught up in looking at other people's wealth. But God is saying that no matter how wealthy the world is, he was, he, he was saying no matter how wealthy Solomon was, he says, I want to let you know something. I clothe the birds and the, and the animals of the forest more and better than anything Solomon could put on. So why are you worrying about it? I'm the one that is taking care of you. I'm the now this is important that we understand because you see, we embrace worry as it's well, Pastor, I just gotta keep it real. You know, we say stuff like that, you know, especially when someone gets goes into the Bible, people look at you and say, Well, I know the Bible says that, but I'm keeping it real. And and uh, uh, and I'm thinking. So so you're saying the Bible's not real? Well, it's 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 spiritual, but I'm concerned about what's happening to me right now. You know, Psalms are nice, but you know I need my rent. You know, reading the Bible's okay, but I need my car payment. You know, uh, you know, uh, uh, glorifying God is fine. And this is what these people were saying. This, this is the kind of pe- stuff that Jesus was tr- ministering to these people that were, were going through some stuff. And Jesus was saying, listen, you have a heavenly father that cares more about you than uh, the, the world that he takes care of. If he's, not, if he's able to take care of the entire world and everything in it, he was saying, you know, the birds, they don't, they don't really work. You know, I, you know, I was watching a bunch of geese the other day, and they were still just nice and big and fat and plump, you know, and I said, man, I wish I had my dad's rifle. We'd have a goose dinner, you know. Uh, uh, okay, I know y'all said that's terrible. Yeah, I said, I said these, these geese, I mean, they, they're, just, they're just cleaning up. And then I got two rabbits that live under my back porch <clears throat> two rabbits now these two rabbits <clears throat> are bigger than small dogs i mean i don't even know how they can get under the porch you know they're so they're so big they, they'd stand up and i know if they stood on their hind feet they would stand up a good foot and a half tall just i mean i've never seen rabbits this big in my life and i said they live in this yard you know they live at the pastor's house and boy, they must have said, you know, somehow the blessings of the Lord is around this house because, because they, aren't they big? They're huge, you know, big, huge rabbits. And I said, you know, what are they eating? And I'm thinking, I said, you know, they've probably been nibbling out of their garden in the backyard, you know. Uh, you know, I've been noticing, you know, some of my things, you know, not all of them, but some of the things, things like they've been eating, mm, you know. And then I was watching one the other day, he was just as happy eating through the grass that I had mowed in the last couple of weeks, you know, just eating through it. You know, I said, man, these rabbits are cleaning up. But, you know, God is taking care of them. God is taking care of them. And you know what? God will take care of you. No matter what you're going through, God is going to take care of you. You know, if you think about how long you've been saved and, and, and how God has brought you through all the issues that you thought you'd never get through. Have you ever done that? Just sit down and you think over your life and you think about, oh, I didn't think I was going to get through that one. Hmm. I worried a whole lot. You know, I probably lost, probably lost a whole six months of my lifetime worrying over that one. Shortened my life by six months. And, and it all turned out okay. God brought me through okay. But the scripture says the issue for our lives is to Seek first the kingdom of God. We get so caught up in our lives that we don't have time to seek God. We get caught up on our jobs. You know, yeah, God tells us we should work. The Bible tells us we should work. Even the Apostle Paul says if you don't work, you shouldn't eat. Amen. Amen. And really what he was telling people is that if you have some people that, that come to church and they're just leeching off the church because they refuse to work, don't give them any money. I know that sounds cold. People say, what? Yeah, if they, you know, if they just come in there to get a handout or a meal, you know, 
The Bible says those are those people that are supposed to be helping. Hmm. Amen. You know, uh, and so the Bible tells us what we need to do. First, seek the Lord. Every day should be a, a day of seeking God. And I'm going to tell you something. If you seek first God every day, it's going to push a whole lot of stuff out of your life. It's going to push a lot of stuff out of your life if you're seeking him first. You know, seeking him first means that um, the first thing on your mind when you get up in the morning is the Lord. That may not be your major prayer time. It could. And maybe for some, it, it should. I know when I was having to get up at uh, 4 a.m. to drive out to Everett, it, you know, it wasn't convenient for me to have my mass of prayer time in the morning. That meant I might as well not go to bed that night. Because uh, I was a but. I did get up in the morning and talk to the Lord and put him first, spend some some time with him, get his direction, you know. Uh, I wanted to let him know, you're first. You're first in everything. This this whole day belongs to you, and I give the day. So seeking the Lord first means, all right, you are telling God, your perfect will for my life will be done today. Now, I want to say something that's really important this scripture alludes to. It, it talks and says, you know, only deal with the trouble that you have today, not tomorrow's trouble. You see, the thing is, is this, the reason why a lot of us stay in trouble and we can't overcome our issues is because we're fighting tomorrow's battles. It, listen, his grace is sufficient for today. Praise God. He will, he will give you the strength to fight your battle today, to have victory today. I mean, I've had the enemy come to me many times and, and he says, I'm going to bring you down. You know, I mean, that's how he talks to me. You think you can live this holy life. One of these days you're going to stumble. And not, he may not talk to you like that, but he comes to me like that. I'm going to get you. That's for sure. I mean, and I'll say, well, you know what? Uh, you missed out on yesterday and the day before that. Mm -mm. <laughs> and 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 I'm just hanging. I'm just hanging in there for the day. And um, and the Bible says tomorrow's not promised to me anyway. So I'm not worried about what you plan to do to me next week. You understand? I'm not worried about what you plan to do to me next week. Praise. All I know is that God is going to keep me today. And when tomorrow comes, it'll be another today. And God is going to keep me today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. And when next Thursday comes, it'll be today. And God is going to keep me today. So all, I, all I'm concerned about is today, and I know God's got me today. And he owns tomorrow. So if somehow you can squeak in from God being here today, and if there's a crack between today and tomorrow, I don't think there is. So you're not going to get me. Because God is able to keep that that I have committed to him. Amen? Yeah. All right. Our time is going fast today, but I'm having a good time. I hope you are too. Yeah. What are the things pertaining to the kingdom of God? Meditate on those things. Meditate on those things that are pertaining to the kingdom of God. I mean, I think about how many times that, you know, issues come up in life. Because life is, is messy. Don't have children if you don't want a mess. You know, I, I see some people, they'll go out and they'll buy all white furniture and, and white carpet and everything looks just perfect in their house. They don't want, you know, expensive, you know, stuff on the counters. And I'm saying, um, they're not ready for the mess. They're pregnant, but they're not ready for the mess. Your, 
Your beloved baby's gonna puke on your carpet and pee on your couch and break your expensive china. They're gonna keep you up all night long. They're gonna poop on everything. Amen. It's, it's, it's a mess. It's a mess. And ladies, until you train your husband, he's going to be a mess. <laughs> Amen. He's going to come in and walk in your house. You got your nice, wonderful new carpet. And he's going to just walk in like it, it ain't there. Okay. I'm stepping on toes right now. Life is messy. Praise God. Amen. One thing that hard for, I'm just going to say this. It's hard, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're, I, I know what the man side is. It's hard when you're a man, you're going to just be the leader of your household. You know exactly how perfect your house is going to be. Your wife is going to be this. And then you find out that half, that half the stuff you believed that you knew about, you really didn't know about it. And that maybe you, now that you got married, now with the two knives in the drawer, you are not the sharpest one. <laughs> Hallelujah. How do you deal with that? Okay, y'all looking at me you're like, oh, he shouldn't say he messed up. He's lost his anointing. Praise God. But y'all know what I'm talking about. It's messy for the wife, too, because she's looking at him saying, oh, man. I got to really be led by faith with this brother. Praise God. I, I'm having a hard time. Mm -mm. Praise. Okay. Praise God. Because you really get to know one another. You really get to know one another. Amen. Praise God. But the Bible tells us, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Don't worry. Now, I'm, uh, you know. It reminds me about a song that I grew up with, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Yeah. You know, I, now, I, I, I love that song so much, I said, I, I should teach the choir that song. Yeah. You know, I, I, one Sunday morning, you know, when I had a big choir, it, I said, it'd be so cool if they just came out whistling and singing that song, Don't Worry, Be Happy. You know, God is telling us not to worry. To walk in his joy and his peace. Not worrying is an intentional thing that you have to do. It's intentional. It's intentional. Praise God. Um, I think about some of the worry moments that I, that I had. I, I think about the time in which, you know, and I probably have said this a few times, but this was a big deal for me. Pastor Dale and I were both working at Boeing, and we both got laid off at the same time. Now, you know, I'll tell you, you know that you may not run out of money today, but, it, but, but it's, you're still burning it at the same rate. <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, you might... You know, and you and you're looking ahead, and the, and you and then you look at the the uh, the uh, money tank, which is your savings, and that tank is getting lower and lower. You know, all your dreams that you had built up in that money tank, it's getting lower and lower, and then finally it runs out, and and now, you know, you don't have that uh, massive two-engine income coming in. And you're thinking about, oh no, what are we going to do? And you know, the grace and the mercy of God, what God lets happen many times just to teach us a lesson as he lets the tank get empty. You say, what? Where's my faith? Sometimes God will let the tank get empty. See, I know now a lot of people out there are saying, Oh, no, God would never let that. No, because you were depending on the tank. But God wants to let you know that I can take care of you. 
even when you run out, I can take care of you. And uh, we, had, we had run out. And we were living off of um, uh, what we got from the strike fund, which I don't know. I think the strike fund was maybe under $200 a week, $100 a week. So you was getting 100 and I was getting 100 and, um, and we had run out of, yeah. So you have children, now, and this is when the children are all small. So, I mean, they're still drinking uh, a, a half gallon of milk a day or more. You know, I mean, the milk is gone, and, and, they, and they still want pot roast and, and, and whatever. You know, they, they still, I mean, they, they're going to still come in in the morning and expect breakfast, and they're going to come in for lunch, and they're going to come in, and, what's, and they don't, you know, and they're not waiting, waiting for you to say, I'm sorry, tonight we're going to have cornflakes for, uh, for supper. They, I mean, they ain't having it. And so, so, so you're dealing with that, and it's getting lower and lower and lower and lower. And this is, you've heard me say this story. This is when God told me, he says, get on your bicycle and ride through the valley. And I said, Jesus, I love riding the bicycle, but I don't feel like riding today. We need some food up in this house. And, um, and I said, and this state is different than Minnesota because Minnesota, you know, you can run out of money and, you, and, they, and, and, and they can't evict you out of your house. You know, you're just going to be there. You know, you, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty, I said, it's a pretty cool place. You know, when you run out of money, you don't have to worry about being put on the street. And I said, but here, we're in the wilderness out here on the Pacific Northwest. They put poor folks, they come and they move your furniture out in the street for you. And so I said, so if you run, if you don't pay the rent at the end of the month, three days later, you may be gone. And now that might not seem like a big deal to y'all, but it was a big deal to me because I had never seen nothing like this. When we first moved here, we seen people's stuff on the street. And I said, they actually put people out of their houses? Where are they going to make them homeless? And they said, that's just the way the law works here. And I thought it was just so barbaric. <laughs> you know, but and so I was saying, Lord, I don't want our stuff on the street. And that's when the Lord said, ride your bicycle and, and gave me a huge contract of houses for my little small business that I had on the side that I was working on the side uh, and gave me something like uh, 500 apartment buildings to do and 3,000 houses, uh, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, we had income again, you know, because I was able to hear the voice of God. If I hadn't rode the bicycle that day, I would never ran into the people that wanted to give me the the job that I didn't know exists. God had a way of, of providing supernaturally for you. He, he knows your situation. He knows the trouble that you're dealing with today. You know, and I didn't even have the money for the equipment, but my brother-in-law said, I, I heard you got a project. He says, can I pay for your first equipment? Can I, can I pay? I said, yeah, pay for it. Amen. And he paid for, and 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 immediately, you know, we income started back up, you know. So um, God is able to come in and meet your need. And so what this whole message is about today, and you know, is that when we seek God first, and we continue to seek God. You see, the reason why people have relapses, and I, I use the term relapse because I, I worked in uh, drug re rehabilitation and for years helping people uh, get free. Um, and my approach was, we're going to put you through the program, but I, I'm going to pray. And we, I would pray for people, and, and God would just set them free where they had no desire, no taste for whatever they were into. So they didn't relapse <laughs> and because there wasn't nothing for them to lapse into. Jesus took it away. But, 
But the thing is, is that uh, every day we have to just seek God. You know, you might not seek him eight hours that day, but you need to just seek him every day. You need to put him first intentionally, Lord. Here I am. I only got 10 minutes here, but here I am. I'm seeking you, you know, at work. And I'm going to, this is the last one I'm going to tell. When I was working at, at Boeing, people pretty much caught on to my habit. And that was that every day at lunch, I would eat for about 15 minutes and then I would go for 15 minutes of prayer. And, uh, and they knew that I did this. Some of them, I think, followed me to my prayer place. But they knew, they knew my habit. They would watch me pick up my Bible, walk out the door, and, and sometimes there were these big, huge crates that were empty. I'd go into one of those, sit down, you know, and somebody was nice enough to set a chair out there. So I'd go sit in the chair and I'd pray. And then when the buzzer rang, I would walk back in, holding my Bible and putting it away. You know, a lot of people got saved just by me doing that. I wasn't even trying to win. I mean, I want to see people saved, but a lot of people, they were like, whatever you got, I want that. Whatever, whatever makes you go into that crate every day and you come out smiling, you know, can I get some of that? <laughs> you know, seek God first in your life every day to deal with the issues and the worries that you have. Seek him to the point where that you give that stuff to him. You're not non-spiritual, and I'm just going to say this, you're not non-spiritual because you face worry. Because you're always going to face your demons. It's what you do with them. It's what you do with them. Praise God. You'll never get so deep or so spiritual that you won't have things that you face in your life. It, it, it's just, just not going to happen. You'll never get to the place where that you'll be beyond any temptation. You know, I always said if Jesus could be tempted, and the Bible says without sin, but, but if Satan could come and bring temptation to Christ, why do you think that you can't be touched? Come on, amen. Why do you think that you can, you know? But the thing is, is that Jesus overcame with the prayer and the word. Well, let's pray, and then there might be some questions, and then we'll be done for today. But I am so happy that I had the opportunity just to share a little bit out of some of my favorite passages of Scripture. Father, I thank you for the saints of VLCC. I thank you because they're great people. Father, I thank you because... You, you given me the opportunity to watch and see them grow and change and, and be the very best versions of themselves that they can be. I thank you, Lord God, that your word works in our lives and that you are faithful. In Jesus' name, amen.